10 wins, no losses, 8 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the undefeated Lawrence Clavey. Once again, Max Parker Jr. is our referee in charge now to give instructions. standing eight count. Fighter cannot be saved with a bell in any round, and the headbutt rule will go to the cards after half the fight. Interesting fight, if only for the fact that each man has some unanswered questions. And Rich will get some answers very soon. I thought that Lawrence Claybay was giving some answers as he was coming up as a professional, Barry. I thought that his progress was very good. You know, as an amateur, although he had a, you know, a successful amateur career, I mean, he was a national champion a couple of years, he made the Olympic team, but he was ousted in the first round, and, and people did not speak highly of Lawrence when he was a, when he was an amateur in terms of, oh, he's going to be a great professional someday. He was just kind of the best, it seemed, out there at the, uh, at the weight, and uh, I think that since becoming a professional, he really has improved a lot. He showed a lot of skills, a lot of speed of hand, and showed that he was picking up the professional game very rapidly. Yeah, I'll take it a step further than that. I, I didn't much like him as an amateur, but as a heavyweight, he's really made a career out of me. First of all, he's a terrific guy. You know, he's one of those guys you look at and you say, boy, I wish this guy would be champion, because what a great champion he would be, just in terms of his character. But he's really impressed me as a boxer. He's got a little pop. He's been dedicated. He comes into the ring in shape. Always had an excellent jab, but he's, he's added to all his credentials as an amateur. And in Daniels, he, he really is getting a guy who's got some pop himself. He he's, gets guys out of there. Robert hasn't lost in his last 15 fights, but he's got to answer the question here of fighting at this kind of weight, 222 pounds. Biggest he ever has been going into a fight was 212. Well, he's actually 218 against Stan Johnson. How can he handle himself against a big man? And Lawrence Claybay is a big man. Good body shot by Claybay. Speed. Born and raised and still lives in Hartford, Connecticut. Loves the area, even though he trains out in Denver now under his uh, trainer Larry Goosen, who can crack the whip pretty good. But Hartford is still his home. In fact, uh, Barry, when we've gone back to Foxwoods to do a fight back there, uh, every now and then Lawrence is usually in attendance, right? Especially if they're amateur fights. I was just going to go there and uh, encourage the young kids. We did an amateur fight back there, or it's uh, very big in his presence. Quick hands, as you see from Lawrence Claybet. Robert Daniels, on the other hand, a former world champion, WBA champion. Won the title by beating Dwight Quawi. Lost it after a couple of successful defenses to Bobby Chaz. Very much of a feeling out round. As we look into the corner of Robert Daniels, they call him Preacher Man. Tell us about him, Rich. Well, Robert Daniels is a guy who brings a big punch. He's, uh, he's never behind in a, well, he might be behind, but he's never out of a fight because of that ability. At his best, of Bob and Weaver try to come in, but he'll sometimes be lazy. And I thought he had a lazy first round that we saw there. But at least he was using it as kind of a study round and didn't do much at all. Listening to Larry Goosen is a trainer right now. When he likes to get those quick uh, flurries going, in every fight, you kind of wonder about that hand. What are you getting through the fight without breaking them? Well, uh, surgery. Yeah, and there have been fighters where they were, and that's just been a chronic problem, and uh, basically means they're going to get a day job. Well, as he told us, 
notes on the, in our uh, pre-fight comments that the, he thinks this one is the one that really did the trick because this time it's been plated, it's steel plated with that steel plate which is still inserted in there and it's still inside. Who knows, maybe now he uh, will be able not only to get through a fight without uh, injuring it, but he may have a bionic uh, hand, a bionic fist. <laughs> Clay not moving a great deal, but he does have great hands. Lawrence can move. His legs are good. He can move if he, if he feels the, the need to. But Daniels is not pressuring him at all. He can stand right in front of him now. He's not getting hit. Daniels, a long time ago, Gary, debuted illegally, kind of fudged on his uh, 
Tyson, the senator's kid, he was uh, old enough to fight. He wasn't. He was only 15 years old. He fought nine fights before they finally caught on to what was going on. And then he had to wait until he was 18. Now, what strikes me now, Rich, is Cliff has started to get himself a little bit more in a punching range. And that's because there's been no answer from Daniels at all. And so, Cliff, they can take a chance and get in there a little bit more. But look where he is now. Maybe a foot closer to Daniels than where he was. Yeah, the only danger in that is that you get so relaxed because it's so easy and you've got a guy who's not punching back that you get relaxed and maybe a little reckless defensively and you leave yourself open for a big shot. And Daniels, if he really wings one, can hurt you with it. Again, there's Clive right in range and that hurt Daniels, that uppercut. Shots to the body. Clive on the gas a little bit more. It's a very effective jab that Clay Bay has. And he brings that right hand behind it extremely quickly for a heavyweight. He forgot his size. Well, you know, this may change in the coming rounds, but so far it's no more than a good workout for Lawrence Clay Bay. A sparring session, basically. He looks like he has a lucky sparring partner in the ring with him. Robert Daniels is doing nothing. That's amazing because Daniels... Uh, in talking with him, he, uh, he felt that this was his big opportunity as well. And if it is, in fact, his opportunity, he's doing nothing to take advantage of it. You're waking up to a scrape your windshield morning. You freeze and freeze all through the night. That's okay. Washer fluids. Crestone de-icer fluid is the yellow powerhouse that won't freeze in your reservoir and guards against refreeze on your windshield. Your Turn your windshield wipers into windshield scrapers. Get in the Crestone zone so nothing can stop you now. He's been voted the most powerful on-air personality in sports. He's larger than life. He sparked a passion taking the country by storm. And the Sporting News says he's generated more buzz Tompkins, Rich Barada. We are in Venice, Florida tonight. Uh, it is building, in fact, uh, the winter home of uh, well, the circus as they uh, work out their acts. We got trapeze. We got all kinds of uh, circus paraphernalia around. But tonight, uh, it is the home of boxing, and uh, this is our main event. Well, it's Clay Bay and Robert Daniels. Clay Bay has owned the fight thus far. Daniels doing nothing in his corner, exhorting him. Uh, do something. Yeah, they want him to start jabbing on it, and he's coming out trying to do that. And, and as he was being told in the corner, you know, he's got, Clay's got his hands down. And I think that one of the reasons for that is because it was so easy for Lawrence. And he ended up with, if Robert Daniels is thinking about perhaps, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, mesmerizing Lawrence Clay by uh, Clay Bay or uh, lulling him to sleep and then striking quickly, perhaps that is his strategy. Play Bay the first three rounds. The last one I thought was his best. He's going to go on the gas a little bit. But he's able to do whatever he wants right now with Daniels. And Daniels is not fighting like a guy who's won 15 in a row. There's a right hand by Clay Bay off the ropes. Remember, Clay Bay has hardly fought recently. He has not had a fight in a long time. He was inactive for 16 months to when he fought in August of 99. And you know, you're just not going to climb up the ladder at that pace. Never gone 10 rounds. Lawrence Clevey has gone 8. He went 8 in his last fight. He went 8 one other time against Louis Monaco. Louis Monaco back in 97. Good uppercut from Clevey. And there's a leaning left hand by Daniels. He might have got a little bit of a wake-up call. Yeah, he, and once again, Lawrence had his hand down there. Clevey has a very good uppercut. Look for that in, uh, in his assault, because that can be a very good weapon for him. Clebay's dad was a professional boxer, but never really encouraged uh, Lawrence to become a professional boxer himself. That was not part of Lawrence's uh, uh, bringing up. In fact, Clebay only went to the gym and then got involved with boxing. It never was really a big passion for him. He went there to lose weight. Harry. I mean, it was, a, it was strictly a measure so that he could drop pounds. He got hit, and that was a big shot, and Daniels has done it again. Now, let's see if we can get Clay Bay out of there. Right in. Daniels finally opens up, and when he did, he hurt Lawrence Clay Bay. 
Judge. Uh, Daniels is a guy, as we said, has been a cruiserweight, stepping up to the heavyweight division because he couldn't get cruiserweight fights and figures this is his moment in the sun. Well, I feel like this is a great opportunity for me, you know, um, moving up as a cruiserweight, you know, fighting a um, legitimate heavyweight. So I look at it as an opportunity, and sometimes, um, you know, opportunities um, come, uh, you know, once in a lifetime, and sometimes you can't turn to an opportunity, right? Well, those are the words of Robert Preacherman Daniels, and uh, looked as though he wasn't going to take advantage of this opportunity presented to him tonight, and then all of a sudden he opened up, he dropped Lawrence Claybay since that time, which I think it's a dead even fight. Hey, uh, we don't know, it may have all been part of the master plan here, Barry, for him to start slow and then come on. the jab with some effectiveness, so too is Clay Bay. Whatever respect Clay Bay may have lost for Daniels, I think he's gotten back. And he's got that right hand in the defensive posture now, Clay Bay, and he can block those big laps if he can. He he's also utilizing his shoulder on the left side to try and uh, to ward off punches if they come from his left side.
from this fight, but still hanging in there and uh, we were splitting the fight. I think you saw right there with that little combination. I believe Lawrence Clayton for a big heavyweight, you know, when you're weighing 235 and above, that classifies you, I think, as a big heavyweight. And he may have as quick a hand as, as any guys, you know, in that range. I mean, if, if you think about who are the big heavyweights uh, today, you think about Lennox Lewis and uh, you know, Michael Grant and all this new generation of, uh, of heavyweights that are bigger. I think Warren Slater probably has the edge enhanced speed over just about everybody. I think that's probably right. And, and I think, too, the thing that the kids people are going to do, I feel, is that they have to move him along quickly now. At uh, 34 years of age, uh, the clock is ticking on him, and uh, there is some talk that three or four fights, and then perhaps uh, they might take a shot with him.
Lawrence Clebe does some very slick little things inside. <laughs> and he has a sneak right hand that he throws. He can really do some things inside. You would think with his style that he'd be best served always by being an outside fighter. You know, throwing the jab, throwing a little move, and using, using his quickness on the outside. But really, he's a very intelligent fighter on the inside because he knows a lot of little tricks. He knows how to throw punches inside. Yes, he does have some skill. That uppercut is very good. He's got a nice jab. There he opened up with about a four-point combination. That spun Daniels around and got outside. Here with another uppercut from outside, which is a very difficult punch to throw. And this is a room like exhibition of boxing by a long play here in round 10. Daniels had a pretty good first minute in the round. But then Clay Bay actually took over on the inside. Yeah, it's out, it's out. It's out. Watch it, Robert. You can almost see Clay Bay studying Daniels, kind of looking at him like a plug under a microscope. Good left hand there by Clay Bay. Yeah, I think maybe his best single punch that he's thrown in the fight there, or at least landed. They uh, put the right hand right at the end of the punch. That was an excellent shot. Hey, where was all that? Exactly. Uh, for the other, for the other nine and a half rounds. And I'm sure that's what Daniels is saying to himself. <laughs> I could have done that before. Uh, a lot of action in the final round. The final round actually a very close round. But uh, Daniels just uh, didn't do enough. And, and Clay Bay showed enough that would uh, indicate to me, Rich, at least that uh, there is the potential of, uh, of his being a player in this heavyweight division. Yeah, it's still potential, but uh, he showed a lot of skills. He shows that speed that he's got of hand, and he shows uh, that he could climb, I think, rather rapidly right into the picture, get himself in the mix. I can see what kind of foot speed he has to go with that hand speed at long range. We'll come back. Lawrence Claybay and uh, Robert Daniels have come to the end of their fight, and uh, we await the decision now. And uh, it looked as though Lawrence Claybay, after being knocked down in the fourth round, gathered himself enough. And I, I would suspect that this may be uh, even a rather lopsided decision for Claybay, but it really says something about this man because he managed to come back from that knockdown, and he came back in very impressive fashion. Robert Daniels, on the other hand, uh, was a guy who just simply didn't do enough. He came out here with what might have been an idea, but he never did get it done. Right now, we're going to take it to the center of the ring at Jimmy Lennon Jr. Jimmy? Gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. All three judges scored about exactly the same, 98 to 91, in favor of the winner, Lawrence Clebe. Lawrence Clebe is the winner, and uh, that is pretty much what we expected. He runs his record to 11 up and none down, and uh, maybe did set the tone for what might be as uh, Clebe wins it, and wins it uh, in rather impressive fashion after being knocked down early in the fight in the fourth round by Robert Daniels. So Clebe...